Morning amigos, Dr. Doug here at GoBodyTrust.com. I wanted to talk today about the four causes of bleeding. Uh, actually five. Uh, very well explained in Chinese medicine um, for your listening and watching pleasure. The first one is of course menstruation and that just is a normal a physiological function of uh, an old blood lining leaving the uterus. Uh, in order to be replaced by a new one. So, and that happens monthly for uh, ovulating women, must usually. And we'll do a whole episode on menstruation. It's a big subject. But uh, the rest of the other four causes of bleeding, we don't want. We don't want to bleed. Uh, we don't want to lose blood. It's obviously uh, not a good thing, but it does happen. The first cause, m most common cause, I should say, is uh, blood stagnation. So this happens when um, an artery or a vein is stopped or punctured. And so the blood cannot flow through that channel like it should and it comes out and that's bleeding. Now it can be on the skin and it can also be internal. Of course if it's internal that's not a good thing. And by the way um, I need to mention that there are red flags uh, that um, prompt one to seek emergency, uh, at least emergency investigation. And unexplained bleeding is one of them. If you're bleeding and you don't have a clue why, uh, emergency medicine needs to take a look. Also, if you have uh, black tar or ground, uh, um, coffee grounds in your stool or bleeding uh, urine uh, or blood coming out of your ears you know, or eyes, things like that, that's unexplained, that's mysterious, that sounds not good. Tumors will bleed too, so <clears throat> just a caution there. So when a blood vessel is impeded, that's blood stagnation. Of course, that goes along with sharp stabbing pain in one place. That's blood stagnation. That's different than cheese stagnation, which is uh, maybe aches, muscle aches and pains, and they come and go, or they change position, uh, tightness, that kind of thing. So <clears throat> blood stagnation, definitely major cause of bleeding. And by the way, in order to stop blood stagnation bleeding, <clears throat> excuse me, is to apply pressure, uh, hopefully pressure with a clean cloth. And hopefully that cloth has some tin chi powder on it, which you can get in Chinatown that magically and mysteriously stops bleeding. I, so uh, battlefield doctors in China have known that for centuries, for millennia. The tin chi powder, which is a root, just a ground up root, you can uh, take it internally or apply it topically, will stop bleeding. And scientists uh, these days um, wonder because it doesn't cause bleeding. Everything they have that stops bleeding will cause, I mean, clotting. We don't want clotting because then that becomes a whole separate problem. Tin chi powder does not do that. Anyway, next is blood heat. We see this a lot in fevers where the blood, see the blood is always warm because it's always moving, right? And so the heat crawls into, where it crawls into this blood and creates uh, reckless marauding of hot blood, as we say in Chinese poetic medicine. Reckless marauding hot blood means that heat expands. And when it gets into the blood, it can be so bad that it boils out of the vessel and then you have bleeding, okay? So and that happens sometimes in fevers. It also happens in children more often than adults because children run hot when they're running around constantly, right? So they, so their pulses are rapid, their tongues are red, uh, they have all the signs of heat, uh, <laughs> very active, very cute, but they get fevers. And when they get a low fever, it's not a big deal because children run hot. A high fever, of course, is something to pay attention to, but maybe a high fever or just maybe a child with a lot of heat, maybe he gets uh, nosebleeds. That's very common with um, uh, blood heat in children. Or socked in the nose and then bleeds a lot, maybe a lot, because that's another thing about blood heat is there's profuse bleeding. And it's red, rich red color, profuse bleeding. Uh, by the way, the way we deal with that, of course, that, the way we deal with that is to use a three-edge needle and take a drop or two of blood just right here, wherever, out of the system. Amazingly, that tiny percentage of blood loss brings that fever down. Can bring that's for a fever with blood heat. That's usually toxic blood heat. For nosebleeds, 
cold ice pack and uh, calm down, calm everything down. So anyway, next one is spleen chi not holding. This we will see occasionally, not too common. It goes along with prolapse. Spleen chi, see, spleen chi holds everything up, right? Spleen chi's mission, one of spleen chi's missions is to hold everything up, keep everything in place. So if it can't keep the blood in the vessels because it's too weak, this is, of course, goes right along. It has to accompany fatigue, extreme fatigue. In fact, exhaustion. Someone is exhausting themselves because they think that that's the right thing to do. Uh, and they are starting to lose it. And then they, um, and things drop. So that's prolapses, uterine prolapse, uh, diaphragm prolapse, right? Um, all kinds of things will fall. So anyway, there you find a bleeding because the uh, blood vessels are too weak to hold the blood. And it just comes out and it comes out pale, kind of skimpy, pale skimpy. Yeah, that's spleen chi not holding. You don't see that too often. And then the last one is one we never see, and that's yin deficiency leakage. So this is in a starving person. Someone who's actually skin and bones, they're starving. You know, they're really in trouble. They need emergency medicine, and they're bleeding because they're leaking, because the uh, the integrity of the blood vessel wall is such is so low that cracks develop, and the blood leaks out. And it will also be kind of pale and, and thin, a bit thin blood. Anyway. Those are the four common, uh, well, not common, but those are the four causes of bleeding plus menstruation. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching. Hasta mañana, amigos.